Hey guys, Matty Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today. Lovely Riverland jobs, love these. This massive off-grid job has been done over two stages because there's quite a bit involved in it. So I'll run you, uh, run you down the specifications. So what we've got on this one, complete off-grid setup, fully integrated into the factory CMS Jayco system. <clears throat> so what that means is your side input, your mains powered input, runs through the system, everything runs as it normally does when you're at a caravan park or mains power. And when you unplug at the press of a little touch button up here, everything that was live is now live again. All your CMS outlets, all of your power outlets, your microwave, the air conditioner, in this case, the dishwasher. That's the outlets where the washing machine is, the washing machine, induction cooker for this one. It's got the Thetford induction cooktop, you know, big screen TV, the, you name it. You know, all your mains power devices, Bring them with you. This setup allows you to do that anywhere on the side of the road at the push of a button. Really easy, and I'll show you guys how that's done. Yes, as with every one of my jobs, they are all unique. This one is no exception whatsoever. Probably on the best end of the spectrum. So this one here involves two of the PowerPool, awesome, most bestest lithium batteries that I love using. Gone for two of them, so two of the 280 PowerPool Scouts, so that's 560 amp hour, 6.7 kilowatt hours there of battery capacity. That's oodles of power. Now, this one here is running the Multi 12 3120 inverter charger, like I said, on all the factory outlets. That's super fast charging, guys, on mains power from the onboard generator. I'll fire that up for you guys as well, so we can do a big test rundown on this. So we've got the owner generator running through that and he's able to throttle control that so it doesn't load it up and I'll go through that with you guys. So the multi 12 3120 amp inverter charger, taking care of the whole system. Solar on this one, we've got the 1000 watts. We're really happy. So two 100s and the four 200s on this. Very happy, there's not really any shading issues. We've had to split two of the 100s across the roof to fit them, um, but we're happy with the outcome of that. So the solar controllers are outside. We've got the 150 smart solar and we've got the 20 amp smart solar controller as well. DC charging on this has gone, gone for the Orion 30. 
Got a, um, and that's on top of the uh, solar as well. So it's got a decent amount of solar coming in as well as uh, vehicle replenishment for old mate. Um, rewiring this system. Now this had the BM Pro system, as you know, the J35. And this came with the optional tablet with the node. Now, if, if you guys that know about the Jayco's and the BM Pro systems, the node is there for you, all your tanks to run into. Okay, now, old mate has said to me, look, he wants a better tank sensing option and he's opted for the differential pressure sensors so we've done that so this has four tanks one gray three fresh so we've put in differential pressure sensors in each of the tanks as well as the gray tanks so there's four there we've also done the lpg tanks guys this has the you know two nine kilo bottles for cooking there and hot water it's instantaneous so because of the tanks he wanted to be able to monitor it he's able to monitor it up on the screen pretty much all of his tanks, including what he's got coming in this soon, which is a long range diesel tank, right? This is a Jayco Optimum with the Iveco, and he's able to get a long range tank made up. And we've already got the sensor coiled up, ready to be tapped into the tank when the tank arrives. And that's all going to be read up on this, which as you guys know, is on the VRM portal. This is remotely monitored from anywhere in the world. Anything you wanna do on this, it's completely monitored. Temperature sensors on this, nuts. We've gone for one in the freezer, one in the fridge. We've also installed a Dometic draw fridge on this one for the customer, and he's got a sensor in that as well. So he's able to see the temperature pretty much on everything you need to see in here, including the bin downstairs where the inverter is. It's an outside bin, so ventilation was crucial. So we've got a dual venting system on that, and that's got temperature control on that as well. So that means the fan that controls that enclosure will come on at a preset temperature from the customer. So we've set that box to come on at a certain temperature and off, and it's fully controlled up on this touchscreen or remotely. If he wants to turn the fan on remotely, he can. Not that you do it. My point is you've got control over the complete system with this setup. So over the BM Pro system, as you guys are aware, it remains here. You've seen the video, you've seen the photos. It is downstairs and I'll show it to you. It remains there. It is unplugged. It is no longer used as a mains charger. The auxiliary in is disabled and completely gone, and the solar input that goes into it is completely disabled. It is now a master switch controlled fuse box, and that's all it is, nothing else. There's no, it would take a lot of time to rewire it, as messy as it is, <laughs> we all know the Jayco's. So those little yellow spay terminals that they jam in the top of it, they all remain, I've just semi-neatened it up to the best of I, I could. And all of the big high current power stuff in the fuses are obviously between the batteries and the solar charge controllers, and they're less than a meter away. So that's all under the bed area here. That's where the lithium batteries are, and the big inverter charger is like, it's actually about 900 mil away. So very happy to be able to get all of the products really close. Touch 70 on this one, guys, so the larger touch screen with the Servo GX downstairs with everything running into it. Very happy with the way this one works. Um, you know, we've also done a rear Anderson plug on this one, an external Anderson directly linked to this lithium battery, monitored of course, because old mate tows a little Susie and he's got a little battery system in that that he wants to charge from all of this power. I mean, why not? This thing's going to be probably at 100% most of its life. So why not offset some of that, you know, power and pump it into that battery? And he can, he's got a little 50 amp lithium in there via a little 20 amp DC charger. So this system will fire that up and that will charge that. You're basically just moving energy from one spot to another, transferring your storage. And he's able to do that. That outlet also doubles as a compressor outlet. So our mate has a compressor. We've done the Anderson plug on it for him. He's able to plug in a compressor to pump up his tires should he need to. There's also another one up the front if he needs to. It's also used as a portable solar panel um, input if you want it. Not that you need it with this much power on the roof, but hey, it's there if you need it. So really, when these guys are free camping, their ability to replenish comes three ways. The two that I love, solar and vehicle, are there, but he's also got the generator guys as a backup. So like I keep saying to you guys, if you wanna manage your energy from this perspective, do so. Use your batteries, right? Use them all. If you've got a generator available on board, Use it not to run loads while it's running. I mean, you do that anyway, but you're charging. Use it to fill your batteries up. And you can on this at like 100 amps an hour, right? So use it to fill the batteries up. Once the batteries are full, shut the generator down, run from batteries. You know, set an alarm on this. So at, I don't know, 40%, this sets an alarm off, and then you go and turn your generator on. As time goes on, you know, we can fit 
the automatic generated start stop systems on these and the full control on this, um, which I might, might do later on. But for now, it's standard manual control. So, you know, you can set that for whatever you want. You know, you might want a 50% alarm. So this will be for 50%. All right, you've used 280 amp hours. Cool. Generator, let's start it up. In three hours, two to three hours, you would have replaced that just from the generator, guys. Solar's going to be on top of that. You've got to remember that. My systems that I do, vehicle, mains, and solar will always pump into the battery if required. If the batteries are in a low state of charge and want the energy, they will take it. So very happy there. Everything's laid out nice and neat. Once again, everything's fused. We've moved things around to tidy things up. Uh, you know, Jayco's are what they are. You guys have seen heaps of them. This is what it is. We've tidied up as best as we could and made things a little bit easier for old mate. And we'll give you the rundown, guys. We'll also put the modem in for him. He's got the uh, net gear with the uh, Ponyting antenna on the roof. So that's the uh, two-in, um, you know, multi-in, multi-out antenna system on this. So it's got two inputs into this. So really good. If you're going to run this or the Teltonica uh, 360, which is what I run, a great system. If you want internet, really fast internet, this is the way to go. Um, Starlink will be there one day, a bit pricey, but this is always on. You, you don't have to set it up. You know, this is on, connected to 12 volt. The antenna's on the roof. It's always on. It's a shark fin antenna, and you don't have to set it up. So it's, it's good for that application. Your old mate wants to monitor all of his battery system. He's got a remote camera system in this he wants to monitor as well. So he's able to go out on the town or something in a local pub or somewhere and Keep, keep his dogs in here and he's able to look at his dogs to make sure they're doing the right thing and not messing up the place. He, he can do that. It's really cool. So um, what else do we do? Sorry, we've done so much in this, I'm losing track. Um, we've also fitted the ventilation system for the toilet on this to uh, all the suck the nasties out as you open up the flap. So it's basically you know, negative pressure will come through and draw air out as opposed to you know pressure building up and you releasing it inside the cab, which can get bit chemically or a bit smelly so that'll that will help him with that smell there um we have like i said guys we fitted the uh, dometic drawer fridge on this one so that was um that had just a standard jaco drawer in it we've cut out the hole and fitted a nice drawer there with a you know nice foam seal around it we've made up a frame you know mitered corners for him old mate's got to paint that and mount that um yeah i'm still running through it um yeah, we've rejigged the panel upstairs to where the tablet was. Old mate's put his camera. But because the tablet is still able to be used, if you turn it on, you just won't see any tanks anymore. Um, the node still exists because it's got the tyre pressure monitored um, sensors on as well. So that's all no longer there. But this, the van works and functions perfectly. So it's an overlay system, as with all of my jobs. Everything 12 volt remains. Nothing is different. There's still the manual switch upstairs. So you still need that to put the 12 on on. You've still got your manual switch to put your pump on. Nothing changes. The difference is now, when you want mains power and you're off the grid, all you've got to do is flick the screen to on, wait for the little timer, and then it's as easy as that. That is how simple it is. If I grab that remote, I can have the air conditioner on. I got my little frying pan over there ready to boil up some water on the induction cooker. I can run, I'm mains power now, we are off grid. This is how it's done. So I'll take you outside, give you the rundown of what I've got going on out there, um, give you a bit of a walk around, run you through what we're doing on it, and um, I don't know, we'll put the induction cooker on and put the air conditioner on, put the microwave on, I won't put the dishwasher on. Um, both fridges are running, have been. I used bugger all actually, we were 100% state of charge when we left yesterday, and I came back this morning and it was sitting on about 86, 85, 86, which is, I believe, what it's at now. There we go. 85, 86. So I'm really impressed with what it what it used overnight. It's pretty good. I mean, that's a fridge freezer, quite a large Dometic in the REOX one, and the Dometic draw fridge. So you know, that's a fair bit of stuff running there. And it only took out that. And obviously now we're parked in the sun. I've, I've had the air conditioner running this morning for a little bit too. Uh, it's not a super sunny day. It's kind of overcast. Sun comes out, sun goes down. Um, it is the start of September at the moment. And I did see 700 odd before. Um, I did a bit of a history check and I saw 900 odd about 22 days ago or something. I can't remember. Um, so 
the system's functioning perfectly. Very happy with this. This is going to produce some good numbers coming in the summer, um, sort of in the next couple of months also, as that sun starts to get high in the sky. Just remember, guys, panels are flat mounted. You can just do the best you can. If this is the sun here, there is that certain spot where the sun hits at, a, at the right angle and the power really increases heaps. And that'll generally happen in the next couple of months. So, you know, mains power on. I'll leave it like this. I'll take you outside and then we'll come back in here and I'll fire up the generator and we'll run some things and do some rundowns. Cool bananas. All right, guys, so as you can see, there's the DC to DC charger for vehicle charging, the Orion 30 amp DC charger. There's a 150 smart solar and there's a 120. So that's taking care of both arrays on the roof. As you can see, the BM Pro system is still in situ, but if you take notes down the side here, you will not see any inputs used. Try and zoom in on it, it's a really tight spot, guys. All right, see, nothing is used, no solar, no aux in, nothing. It is basically just power in, right, from the battery, then through our shunt so it's all monitored. So all of the existing circuits that exist in the Jayco all get monitored, as ugly as they are. All right, they're all monitored, everything. Oh, mate, it's got the track on this as well. We've got the savvy level as well. Now, there's the servo, all right, so that runs up to the top. Take note of the tank 140. So there's two tank 140s on this, and that's for their, all the um, differential pressure sensors. So one tank 40 is maxed out, all four channels are used. That's three water tanks and one gray. The other one is diesel long range tank and two LPG. So essentially there's one channel spare. And obviously all the V directs are for the solar and the shunt. And then you've got the V bus for the inverter charger. And this, um, you know, this was quite a tight little location to get it into. You can see what we're working with and ventilation. We have to be consider, um, you know, considerable layout because of the diesel heaters. We had to work out where was the best place and we were able to have, because we've got the temperature sensor in here, we're able to monitor this heat build up in here. And under full load and running it for a long time, I think the best it hit was like 30, oh, it was like 38 or something. It was bugger all. So, now that this is right at the top, like at its highest point, this is fully controlled, but it's always venting though, mind you guys, it's always venting. And there's another, another vent there that you can see. That there will draw air in from the center, which is all open um, and no heat sources in there. It's actually nice and cool, the water tanks are in there. And this will convect air through here, as well as the front of this is all open. So there's, there's a monster amount of air in here. And the reason we didn't do the venting on the uh, door, which we could have done, is if you look at the location, I don't know if you guys with vans and all that know, that's the rear wheel. So what happens around this area is all that dust, you know, clouds up and just kind of builds up. And there's no doubt in my mind, had if I put a vent here, this box would be absolutely caked with dust and not a good thing with a, you know, nice new Victron setup. So that's why we've gone for the internal venting system. So I'm happy with this and we're able to monitor it. I can monitor that remotely, guys, everywhere, anywhere, anytime. So there we have it, that's all the stuff. It's all nice and neat, everything's easily labeled, ready to see. You, know, you can't really you can't really bugger it up, it's, it's simple. Everything's all here, guys. Um, all right, let's go inside and do some load testing. There we go, 16, we'll go, go there, three, there she is, she's kicked in. So we'll go, whoop. They horribly touch things. All right, so that's running now, so we just confirm. You can hear it ramping up. 620 watts of solar, guys. So it's a thousand watt system on the roof, max. Right, like I said, we are only on the first, first couple of days of spring, and it's not the best of days. But I'm really happy with this outcome this time of year. It's really good. All right, beautiful. Now let's shoot around and we'll go get that induction cooker going. Nine, okay, induction cooker on nine. Got some water in there. Let's go see what that's running at. Beautiful, so to read it, you can see there's, there's no shore power here at the moment, All right? We're not plugged in, we are free camping. So that's gonna show both generator and power because this has the original transfer switch, which I'll show you guys in a second. We are inverting. 
you see, we're receiving 620 from the sun, but we're pulling 1200. There we go. That's where the power's going. All right, so let's go and put some more loads on. Let's put on the microwave. Oh, we're gonna stop, we're gonna do this one. We'll go. One minute, we've got a cup in there. Microwave, air conditioner, induction cooker on flat out. No worries whatsoever. Handles it with ease. It's really good to be able to do that. Air conditioner, microwave going and induction going at the same time. So nothing's turning off. You know, this is this is doing it. You know, you're not overloading anything. This is running well within its limits. And that'll continue to do that. And you know, both fridges are still on, everything 12 volts still on. You know, everything's everything's happy days here. So that's a really good load test there. Beautiful. Air conditioner, microwave, an induction cooker, all at the same time. I'll show you guys the original setup. So this has the onboard Onan generator. And the way it's done is you've got the manual transfer switch. And because this is the multi-plus inverter charger, it's only got the single input, this is still relevant. So you still select what goes into the multi, all right? So if obviously old mate's free camping, he'll leave it in this generator position. So that way, every time he turns his generator on, the servo or the, the Victron will pick up that that's running and it will start charging and doing its thing. And I'll show you that right now. So we're on generator, we are free camping. Right, now I'll go over to the touch screen, I'll show you what happens. Watch the word inverting change, and then you'll see some shore power come on. There it is. And then watch the charge rate increase. All right, so we're running the generator now, guys. Now, here's the beautiful thing about it, I don't know if you watch my other videos, but if you don't want to load your generator up for, for whatever reason, you know, you want to back it off and pull less from it. Look at that charge rate, guy, how good is that? It's fast charging there, beautiful. If you want to do that, you can. I'll show you how it's done. It's very simple. Current limit is set for 15 amps. We bring that down to say five amps. That means the most, you hear that? Generator back right off. Because now it's only using this from the generator. Thousand watts, but take note of the AC loads, guys. The AC loads are higher than the generator. But if you look at the battery, see, so now we're pulling from the battery. So it's using battery power and shore power to run this load. Now I'm running the air conditioner and the induction cooker simultaneously. It can do that, it's very clever, and obviously as the load disappears, this power will go straight into the battery, basically when it's less. Solar's still on, guys, take note, solar is still on. So it's, it's, it's helping itself out. You might wanna make it a little bit different. You might wanna you know, load up that generator a bit more. If we go up to 7.5, I'll show you what happens. You hear that? See the shore power increase? So now we're pulling seven and a half amps from the shore as a maximum, and the rest of it will come from batteries if required. But in this case, it's not. Even though this is higher than this, 
obviously this is coming in as well. So that's why we're able to charge now. Now if I was to put a load on to exceed this, let's do that. So I'll leave that running, right? That's skewing away. So we'll go this, put that on. So the air conditioner's still cranked on the 16. All right, we've got the induction cooker on flat out, and now we've got the microwave on. Now let's look at these numbers, and I'll show you what I mean. See how the generator number hasn't really moved? But yet this has increased exponentially. But now look at the wattage, we're, uh, the amperage we're pulling and wattage we're pulling from the battery. So it's supplementing from it. I can drop that right back even more. So if we pulled that generator back to know, five amps, four amps, four, you hear that? Watch that shore power go to less. How good's that? So now, but we're using more from the battery, you see? But take note, the AC loads hasn't changed. My induction cooker's still on, guys. The air conditioner's still on. The induction cooker's still going, right? And the microwave sticker's still going, right? It's, nothing changes. It's all still on. Here's the cheeky bonus. Let the microwave. If I go and turn the generator off, simulate some low fuel, Right, I'll show you what happens. We'll keep it running. Air conditioner's still on. Do it up here, ready? Generator's off. That's still on. That's still on. And now, we're all still on, nothing's changed, see? The AC loads are still there. The system keeps running. So essentially it's, um almost like a backup system. So when you, when you turn this system to the on position, it'll sense mains power or generator, wherever you select the power coming from, and it'll use that. And then if the power disappears, it'll go back to batteries. It's a very clever system. So very happy to uh, you know show these guys how it's used. And you know they can do this anywhere, anytime, whenever they want. It's very cool. I'll turn this induction cooker off, guys, and um, hope that's a good enough rundown for you guys. I'm not going to be plugged in the mains power, there's no point, there's a generator on board, I'm able to play with that, so here we have it guys, enjoy that setup, monster setup, 560 amp hours of lithium, 6.7 kilowatt hours of storage, 1000 watts of solar on the roof, MPPT 150 smart solar, 120 smart solars, that's two smart solar controllers in network, got the Orion 30 amp DC charger, got the multi 12 3120 inverter charger, with that fast chargeability for these guys from the generator and anywhere on mains power and running on all the factory outlets, induction cooker, boiling away, you know, air conditioner, humming away, dishwasher, happy days with that one, washing machine in the uh, ensuite there, anything mains power they want, it's all able to be used, microwave, off-grid, so enjoy.